Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. I'm Boomy and today we are watching Surviving the Arctic Meta by Tier Zoo. This one was suggested by Ryan Hart over here along with uh, two other videos which I'll also be checking out today. Yeah, I'll be spacing them out. Well, at least on the release part. So don't worry, all three will be watched. Um, yeah, uh, the Arctic meta. I'm gonna say that we're probably gonna focus more on like the aquatic animals because I'm wrecking my head and apart from the polar bear, which is, I think, probably the only uh, land animal that lives in the Arctic that can do decent. And even then, it's, well, let's just say effectiveness is lowering down especially in most recent years so i'm still gonna say that we're probably gonna be well at least ranking wise we're gonna get the orcas as the s tier um let's see we have the sea lions as well so most of the bigger aquatic animals and let's see do i think some of the whales live uh live in the arctic I know the narwhal does so yeah those are like i said in a lot of my theory zoo videos i barely know any animal facts that's why this is so enjoyable to me to watch because i learned something along the way so hopefully i get to learn something new that gets presented by tier zoo so yeah, let's just go ahead and watch the video. So remember, if you like my reactions, don't forget to leave a like. Let me know your thoughts on the video down in the comment section below and consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to leave your suggestions and what I should check out next. Leave them down in the comments. That being said, let's go ahead and watch the video. Ready? Go. Polar bears. <laughs> sea doggos. Down, decimated. Okay, maybe I was wrong. Wait, what was that? There was a message there. If you actually took the time to pause the video and read this, uh, would you mind subscribing real quick? Don't worry, my guy, I'm already subscribed. And for those of you who are watching my videos and haven't subscribed to Tier Zoo, go ahead and subscribe as well. While servers like Australia and the Amazon can seem tough, what makes them difficult is the competition there. Mm -hmm. Nothing about the server itself directly impedes your survival. However, there are some areas of the game which punish players who aren't equipped to deal with the passive status effects dealt by the overworld. Probably the best examples of this are the polar servers, of which there are two. I'll save Antarctica for another time. Today, Ooh. we're looking at the player's surviving the really cold and icy Arctic server. What makes this server so tough is that for a large portion of the time, the cold atmosphere constantly drains stamina and HP. Mm -hmm. You'll need two things to not have the server drain. Cold resistance. The first thing you need is some sort of armor that has cold resistance. Whether that comes in the form of thick fur, down feathers, or blubber. Without cold resistance, you'll see... Oh yeah, there are snow eyes. Uh, I mean snow the owls. The second thing you'll need to do is make sure you spec into the endotherm class. This allows you to recover the most stamina by eating. The cost of doing this is that you can't get any energy from sunlight and have to continuously find loot in order to survive. However, the Polar Night World Event actually removes sunlight from the overworld for months at a time, so pulling Damn. out an ectotherm build here would actually be next to impossible anyway. This is why reptile and amphibian players are currently region locked mm -hmm. to the lower latitude levels. So today, basically anything that um, has a lot of slime or depends on. Um, not just slime, but water in general. You're probably not gonna survive in the server. I want to talk about the things that the best Arctic builds are doing to stand out in such a difficult meta. Before we get into it, I want to be clear on what I'm considering the Arctic, so I don't get a thousand comments asking why I forgot something. <laughs> what about the Komodo Greek dragons? Greek, yeah. Golden eagle, wolverine, orca, and moose all may venture into the Arctic. But since they're not exclusive to the Arctic, I'm omitting them for this one. What? I'm betting a lot of you think you've got no orcas. Come on. Now, you're probably guessing that my top picks for the show Snow are wolves. the white wolves because of their pack hunting strategy, and mm -hmm. the polar bears because of their insane base stats. And I definitely don't blame you. I've showed a pretty constant bias towards high-powered or tactical carnivore builds in previous videos. Yep. But in this case, I don't think it's that simple. Let's talk about the polar bear first. Interesting. So okay. Have it pretty good. They're nearly unparalleled in combat, 
and are also extremely versatile thanks to their omnivorous playstyle. They've also got an awesome, unique ability that lets them skip the tougher stages of the game, waiting until the difficulty drops back down to normal to continue. Mm, hibernation. They just sleep off the bad times. <laughs> the same cannot be said about polar bears, though. While they definitely have the same extreme combat power other bears do, they're not omnivores. They're fully committed to PKing and don't get much oh, of scavenging like they're ca these uh, bears carnivores. Bears do. In addition, they also don't get to skip the polar night like other bears can, <laughs> meaning they're stuck hunting during one of the most difficult world events on one of the most difficult servers in the game. Furthermore, even though they do have crazy high base stats, they don't have any broken special abilities that make them top tier. Their stealth is harshly reduced because of the lack of cover and also their extremely pungent smell. This means polar bears must constantly outplay their opponents, either by setting traps <laughs> or somehow sneaking up on targets in spite of their abysmal stealth. In desperate Oof. times, it can mean picking really unfavorable fights. Now, as With for other polar the Arctic, bears, they're in kind of a weird place. They tend to hunt in smaller packs, either duos or trios. Why they choose to do this instead of forming bigger clans is beyond smaller squads. This is a problem because wolves really only have two options when it comes to prey rabbits and musk oxen. Rabbits are pretty much free wins for wolves, but aren't worth near enough XP to sustain a team. Yeah, that's true. On the true. other hand, three wolves aren't near strong enough to bring down a good musk ox player. And so wolves are in the unfortunate but not uncommon position of being forced to either grief builds from lower weight classes, or hope to catch a musk ox that's either really new to the game or already low on HP. Again, a lot of hunters do this, but hunting the weak is not a top tier trait. Wolves are much better that is true. with mid-weight herbivores. But really, there's not much reason to play DPS when you could just choose the support version of this. Aww. Program. Man. Seeing this video of dogs just makes me sad. Ha! Ah, if if you haven't been um, following my Twitter, I I just recently lost Panda, my um, my seven month old puppy. It's just it's just sad. That's why I have my sadness Mountain Dew over here. <laughs> Uh, all right, gotta move on. Don't get me wrong, wolves are still pretty great and can score huh. wins against bigger targets when things go according to plan. They aren't in near as tough a spot as, for example, the Arctic Fox, which has hardly any favorable matchups in the region and has to mostly rely on stealth in order to avoid being obliterated by bears and wolves. On top of this, Arctic foxes are extremely vulnerable rabies. to the Arctic rabies virus. And as a result, its player base is declining significantly. Damn. I don't want to get too off topic though, I'll cover virus players in a different video. Okay, so if the top predators in this region aren't the top tiers of the meta, who is? Is it the musk ox I was just talking about? No. I certainly think the musk ox is an excellent build. It's managed to max out its first skill tree to grant a huge defense bonus. Biting or slashing through its hair is near impossible. Their horns and charge attack are also not something any player wants Oof. to get hit by. Having a favorable matchup against wolves and polar bears means their worst issue is lack of food. The spawn rate for plants is just abysmal in the Arctic. Trees are completely absent there, and sometimes the best loot you can That's find true. is only moss or lichen. If you like tanks but don't like starving, I think your best option is to switch to a marine tank. There's much better loot available on the seafloor, like... Oh wow, I didn't even consider the crab builds. Especially the... Oh, that's right, there are a lot of creatures living down there. Clam, seaweed, and fish. One of the top examples is the narwhal. Narwhal. The narwhal excels at being able to find said loot because of their echolocation. This is believed to be amplified by their ridiculous tusk, which can also be used to stun smaller prey. Oof. Unfortunately, this cumbersome, unwieldy weapon isn't too useful on defense. And since narwhals are locked into the ocean server, they don't have any counterplay options against overpowered orcas that occasionally visit the arctic server. That's why the best arctic build is the walrus. Like the narwhal, it also survives off the of walrus. The seafloor, but it's got two tusks that are much more effective for defense. While they're admittedly not much Interesting. better in the orca matchup, they're able to escape onto land, where they can easily hold their own. Even polar bear players would only pick fights with a walrus if they have literally too much no blubber. Option. And when they do it, it usually doesn't end up going well for them. Oh. Their insane size and thick blubber makes most attacks from predators laughably mm -hmm. weak. Meanwhile, their counterattacks do enough damage to make any aggressor reconsider choosing the class that they do. Okay, so we can't talk about the Arctic without talking about the elephant in the room. One of the, the elephant main mechanics, <laughs> called the greenhouse effect is slowly reducing the, the greenhouse effect. I love it. Player cap in the polar servers. 
This, combined with the ganking by humans, has uprooted the former Arctic meta, and in general just made it an unstable and unbalanced region. What I'm trying to say is that, like a few other things, the best advice for someone <laughs> trying to get into the Arctic meta would be to start a few years ago. So that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Wait, what was that? Years that, like a few other things, the best advice for someone trying to get into the Arctic meta would be to start a few years ago. Oh, damn. <laughs> Basically, if you want to play the Arctic meta in in a fun way with more uh, availability and more options to choose from, the best way is to start basically before <laughs> humans were a thing. <laughs> so that about wraps it up for this video. Oh, Thank you man. so much for watching. That was a good one. I totally did not expect the walrus. It, I don't think I mentioned it in the beginning of the video, but that totally flew over my head, man. I was, I was highly expecting the orcas to be the more dominant, but as he said, he did not include it because orcas don't just stick to the Arctic, which makes sense, of course. So, yeah, that was that was surviving the Arctic meta. A very interesting video. A lot of surprises there, <sighs> man. I love it. I love it. I, I love learning new facts, um, tidbits of information. I don't know how useful they are in real life to me specifically, but it makes me happy learning a lot of trivia. That's why I, I like watching peer zoo videos. Well, apart from the obvious game refer references he's using. Yeah. <laughs> But that's gonna be it for me today, guys. Link to my Twitter is down in the description below. Go ahead and check it out if you want to. And if you're new here and enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like. Let me know your thoughts on the video down in the comment section below and consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to leave your suggestions and what I should check out next. That being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!